Okay. So that's really a very familiar with the basic concept uh, about uh, how the active manager cheating and how we're determining about that. And uh, this video we're talking talking something about the how to calculate it. this return dot the weight actually. Uh, the active manager put on this four bench. Remember this for Ben try this basically uh, almost include all the US stocks market. So let's assume that uh, the active manager's company's universe is somewhere around here. And uh, this dot has a fixed weight towards this four guy. This is a universe fixed. And uh, each month, the active managers through adjusting a little bit of the, about the weights inside the this universe, so the return is like through time is close to this guys. So sometimes, you know, like because each month is circumstances, the situation is kind of different. So we, if we just compare all these thoughts with the universe is kind of uh, it's kind of not 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 that easy to determine whether uh the manager is cheating or not so it's like we we figure out a almost the average values of certain time of the half to manager's return and compare compare that average return to this universe and uh that help us to usually figure out whether the acting manager is cheating or not. So here we introduce a concept called the minimal tracking arrow benchmark. It's like we figure out a point that are among uh, around these all these uh, return of the active manager's portfolio, like this one, that this dot has uh, is closed to all these returns through times, like each month. This dot is uh, close to them all, uh, close all of them, and this dot is in this period has a fixed weight towards these four guys. And then we compared this dot with this one. It's like, uh, like, and the, this is certain period. And then probably we slide the time window and figure out next period. Probably it's around here. And this is average in the next period. And if all this, well, we temporarily count the, or, or we can just call it minimal tracking error bench. If it's close to this, the universe company said, so this active manager is now cheating. So how we how we do calculate the minimal tracking error bench? So it should have a fixed weight towards these four guys. And this got the very, uh, it's almost very close very close to all this monthly return of the acting manager's portfolio. So how do we calculate that? So this is the weight of the minimal tracking error benchmark. And uh, if and and if we use the return of this for benchmark times this guy times the weight should be close enough to the portfolio managers, uh, the, the active manager's portfolio. Assume that FTQGX is the per active manager's portfolio. And this is the return through months. And uh, also the R1000 uh, BG's return through, through months. If the minimal tracking error bench has a fixed weight and it's also close enough to each return of the FTQGX. So it's like this weight 
this for way to determine where the uh, manual tracking error benchmark is. And this for which times the return of each month of these four benchmarks should be close enough to the active manager's portfolio return. So this is the difference between the FTQ GX and the four benchmark the four benchmark time zero weight and we figure out we or we settle this for weight by lower lowering the difference between the active manager portfolio return and the four benchmarks return time zero weight variance lower the variance of this difference and fix this for guys and this is the this is a variance, and the way we do it is quite quite simple. It's just we 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 first uh, set this question is like mm, the return of the portfolio minus the bench times its weight and through times, and here's the full weight we can arbitrarily set it to any value as long as they sum to one and none of them are negative. Remember that no short selling, right? And then this is a, the object. The object is the variance of this difference, right? And we click the data, use the solver. As you can see, the objective is to lowering the variance of the difference by adjusting by adjusting this for weight, by adjusting for this for weight. And the constraints, each weight got to be greater or equal than zero, because no short selling, remember that's very important, and they sum to one. And we click the solve. So, through adjusting this for, this for guys, we can, we can, okay, oh my god. As you can see, if you adjust some of this, uh, all, all number changes. Uh, so, by adjusting these four guys, we're lowering the variance of the difference to these guys. It's the, the minimal uh, tracking error benchmark. And this is the difference, like the difference between the, uh, as you can see, L4 is our portfolio return. And the M4 is the benchmark. Here we assume it's beating S&P 500. That's the difference between this. And it should be like the difference between these guys should be close enough, right? Right? So if it's not that close enough, like active return, remember, right? Active return. Uh, are the minimal tracking error bench active return are so different uh, from the active return. Active return just the portfolio return minus the benchmark return, right? If they are so different and after you calculate the standard deviation of the return, which is also uh, the active risk, right? we can calculate the IR of the minimal tracking error bench and the, and the, 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 the active the, the IR. If these guys are so different, that means the active manager probably cheating. As you can see here, this number probably indicates the manager of FGQGX is cheating. But after all, FGQGX is a fundamental manager manage the portfolio. So that's different. But if uh, active manager manager image funds, so these two numbers should be close enough. And that's basic calculation about the minimal tracking error bench and basic idea about the uh, active managers chasing. So next video, I would introduce you how to draw the map. As you can see, I draw it a lot, uh, use it a lot of times, but probably you don't know, like in this map, where could I put this dot? So next video, I introduce about that.